Mr. Darren, welcome. Thank you. Um, you are a great champion uh, for uh, India. Uh, this is a great conference and all to your efforts. So thank, thank you very you. much for hosting sure. a wonderful conference. Oh, thank you very much. My pleasure. It's a delight. You were listening to me earlier and you were talking about smart cities mm -hmm. and how you're working with the government of uh, the new state of Andhra Pradesh. Sure. And working with them in trying to bring, you know, you know, take care of one particular village in terms of executing how a smart village should operate. So I'd let you, you know, expand on that. Yes, uh, I started teaching uh, building smart cities uh, focused in India. Uh, we focused on um, the three cities that the Obama administration and Modi administration picked, Ajmer, Allahabad, and uh, Vishakhapatnam. And uh, we got involved with that project. Uh, Mr. Bankai and I do was very uh, excited about the projects and the student innovation and ideas that were brought forth. So he encouraged me to focus on one city, which is Vizak. We did that this year, earlier this year. Mr. Naidu has met me and said, you know, it's more important for us to address the needs of the villagers. They represent, you know, 70% of our population. And the happiness index of the villagers is more important for the health of our economy, to grow that economy, as well as to have a good government. So I have taken that to heart. And I have mobilized all my contacts here in the Silicon Valley. There are about 14 to 16 companies now who have come forward and more have joined today to say, we want to help you achieve this objective of making a village smart but scalable. Um, so use our technologies to strip down all the belts and whistles, deliver the value to the villagers, co-innovate with them, give them a village that they want, that will take them further so they can do global trade uh, and sell products worldwide to boost that economy. And that's the idea. We are not, uh, the reason I say that I, I did not adopt this village is because I'm not bringing them infrastructure, building roads, building um, toilets. I am empowering the people with technology. They can do it themselves and take it further. And that, that's the concept of a smart village from the Berkeley point of view. No, I think that uh, uh, should be the concept from you know the world's point of view as well, because that is the need of the hour. Sure. Uh, empowering people is what is needed now, especially in a country like India. Um, I want to explore a little further and see. There are, like you said, uh, infrastructure challenges, uh, you know, uh, innovation challenges, uh, growth challenges overall. Uh, but you know, there's a lot of potential. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of young population in India. Um, how do you see, from your perspective, sitting here at the high school of business and UC Berkeley as a whole, uh, when you look at the young Indian population um, from the time that you left India, sure. these are very different uh, people, very uh, different generation. Yes, I think the, the young people today uh, have a different mindset. They are fast learners. This the digital uh, technology and economy is very, very pervasive. Uh, the learning curve is very brief, and they learn fast. And that is what we are observing about this generation of Indians. When I was growing up, uh, we are so ignorant. We didn't know. There was no communication. There's no internet. There were no phones. They were, we, we couldn't even get a newspaper. Uh, but now, uh, as knowledge is flowing so uh, exponentially, as knowledge is being created here in the Silicon Valley, the young people in India are capturing it on their iPhones, on internet, through emails and so on, and they too have innovative ideas. And I think this is a, a different uh, uh, competitive field that anyone who, who wants to innovate and who wants to succeed can create digital models that are essentially much more cost effective than creating more businesses. Uh, again, uh, continuing on the same topic, Mm -hmm. um, if I put you uh, an academic question, as you get a lot of international students here and yes. also from India, uh, and they're very academic driven. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what India teaches you. Sure. Uh, I was giving an example earlier uh, at a particular university in India, the, the uh, admission threshold was 100%. If you go 99%, you can't get in that university. Right. So that is very frustrating for a lot of uh, young people. Mm -hmm. um, but when they come here, uh, the methodology of teaching here is very different. Yes. It's not by rote uh, method, it's not just by academics, but an mm -hmm. overall uh, growth of a, of a person as a leader, as sure. a team uh, you know, builder, etc. 
Um, do you see those challenges or do you think those are kind of, uh, you know, disappearing a little bit? Well, I see those challenges. I run a school in India and I'm faced with this. I founded a school and uh, the curriculum that's prescribed by the state of Andhra is based on uh, passing tests, memorizing and all of that. It has nothing to do with critical um, thinking, uh, developing new ideas. So we uh, feel like throwing that curriculum away and starting anew and teaching young people how to think how to bring their ideas forward and create business models. But the problem, the biggest obstacle, does not even come from the state, it comes from the parents. The parents of these children say, don't teach my children all this critical thinking and all the nonsense, we just want them to pass this test, get 100%, get MSET exam at a high school so they can get a medical school. So there's a cultural gap here and a systematic uh, uh, problem uh, that we just need to correct. So how do we break this monotony of uh, you know, creating robots rather than human beings? Yes, I think, uh, I think that has to come um, uh, with uh, uh, even the government even uh, changing the rules of the game and saying uh, it is not this test and that test and this score to get admissions, but probably give them more tools and resources that the young people can become entrepreneurs and when the entrepreneurial activity just takes place, then you don't need to go to college, you know, uh, like Gates and other people. Uh, you know, it's not the college that got them through or Steve Jobs, it's their ideas and making those ideas come forth. But I think we just need a state uh, like in Andhra or other places that just fosters that, those creative thought processes where people can, uh, can bring those ideas to market much faster and create that environment. I think that's, where, that's what made America great. Uh, I think uh, here, you know, if you have ideas, you take them to market, you fail fast, you do it, and you do it till you, you succeed. And I think that's what India needs. We need a, definitely a change in our system and, and in our thinking. So we give a good example, but here the uh, intellectual mindset was very mature for people like Gates to take that risk mm -hmm. and still be able to you know, afford a living. In India, there's no other option unless you study well. Right. But you know things are changing uh, slightly. But I'm uh, more interested in asking uh, the other question is uh, on uh, academic institution at the higher uh, learning. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like I said, you are the, one of the foremost universities here. When you look back at big institutions in India, uh, where do you see the challenges and why aren't they adopting those methodologies when their own students come here and succeed at much, much better levels? Yes. I think it's, uh, it's in the system. Um, I mean, just the sheer fact that there have been more Nobel laureates of Indian extraction here and not in India. India was not able to produce it in their own uh, land, but when they came here, and they, the Indians prosper here. I have prospered here uh, wonderfully, and uh, uh, my father and my brothers and all of us, we have done very well. We wouldn't have done the same thing in India because there are too many barriers to cross, too many hang-ups we have, whether it's the caste or whether it's language or state. We have too many of those silos, silo type of barriers. And I think we're coming out of it, and I'm looking at this next generation which is the digital generation that will be free from those hang-ups and move forward. I have a lot of um, hope for this generation and I think there's a lot of future for this younger generation to, uh, to take India forward. All right. Again, uh, a job very well done. I appreciate the opportunity and thank you so much. Oh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure.